Convent. 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 Oh, convent. What? Uh, quick review. Old dead guys. Weirdos. Uh, cell theory. Everything's made for cells. Cells aren't just structure, but they're also function. And cells only come from other cells. Then we started on our trip through cell parts. We didn't even get all the way through cell membranes because cell membranes are complicated. Uh, the fluid mosaic model, I showed you the bubble with the swirling stuff to kind of express that it's a fluid structure. Um, and then phospholipids, the molecule that has the two ends that are so very different. The phosphate head that is polar, so it attracts water, we call that hydrophilic. And the two fatty acid tails that are nonpolar and repel water, so that when you take a bunch of them and shake them up in water, they kind of automatically do this. They, they stick their tails together, and eventually you get this big sheet of them with their tails stuck together, and give it long enough, and they'll kind of seal around into a sphere. And so I would say that right there is the drawing you want to make, not with as many as that. But make sure you get the idea that they, they have these two tails and the tails are facing each other around in a circle. Um, and then at the bottom, write down that that is called a lipid bilayer. Some of you are doing a more thorough job than others of showing how those tails go together. It is definitely something I'll ask you to do on a test. So might be a good idea. To give you a more 3D sense of things, right? Tails in, heads out, water here, water here. And now kind of the whole picture because it's a fluid mosaic. It's not just phospholipids. There's a bunch of other stuff floating in there too. Don't try and draw that. So the fluid mosaic model, you don't have to write it again. It's already there. Um, and I think, wait, hang on, hang on. What did I do here? So you've already written this part, right? You got phospholipids. Now add on to that cholesterol. There. Cholesterol, which kind of acts like, like it gets a, it gets a bad rap in uh, nutritional circles. Um, but actually, it's totally essential to your cell membranes. It's the stuff that keeps everything fluid. It's almost like antifreeze for your cell membranes. Now, it's a good kind of cholesterol. There's also a bad kind that can contribute to artery blockage and bad stuff like that. But you need the good stuff. Um, so that's the little yellow bits here floating around. And then finally, we've got proteins. And the proteins have really three main different jobs. Transport proteins to help things get across the cell membrane. Marker proteins to help identify cells to other cells. And receptor proteins, which are basically little proteins on the outside that when something plugs into them, they do something to the cell. A good example would be how you, how you smell things. You smell things with receptor proteins. There's little proteins on the inside of your nose that when, do you know that when you smell something, you're actually taking in molecules of that thing that you smell, which you don't want to think about too much, especially with bad smells. Um, but what happens is the thing that smells like that smells like that because it drifts into your nose and it's the right shape to plug into the right receptor protein. When it does that, that protein fires off a nerve sig signal to your brain that says, oh, that smells like roses or that smells like poop or whatever. That's how smell works by those receptor proteins. Um, but I'm not going to make you memorize those receptor proteins, I don't think, um, or, or marker or transport proteins. Just know that there are these proteins, these purple things, um, that have basically three different jobs. We'll probably come back to those. Cell membrane. That's what's going on there. Phospholipids, proteins, cholesterol, all of it flowing around. Questions? Yeah. 
It's your first cell part of many. Next, from all the way on the outside, let's go to, oh, I did write those down. Good, you should write those. Yeah, transport marker receptor. By the way, marker proteins, why would a cell need what's basically an ID tag? Why would a cell need to identify itself? What use is that, Hazel? Um, well, it needs to identify itself so it knows, I don't know. Yeah. Is there any reason a cell would need to prove it's a cell of oh. yours? Wait, to make sure it's not like a like a sickness. So so which system, which body system are we going to be talking about here that's going to be going around checking ID? White cells. What kind? White cells. White blood cells, right? That's your what system? Immune. Immune system, exactly. It's this like roving band of killers going around your body checking ID because you don't want other cells that aren't yours in your body really almost ever right like that's probably a bad thing if somebody else's cells are in there although organ transplants this is the reason this is the reason for transplant rejection if you've heard of that where transplant patients if you get a you know a, a kidney or a, a cornea or, or some transplanted organ skin graft even you have to take immune suppressing drugs because those cells that you just had transplanted onto you or into you they don't have the right ID, right? So you got to suppress your immune system to keep it from poking holes in those cells that are, you know, serving as your new organ until the body kind of adjusts to it. So important things, these membrane proteins. Um, we'll talk about transport proteins later in the chapter, but we've talked about the other two now, so that's good. Now, from outside the cell to all the way to the middle, the nucleus, which you have in all your cells, except for your red blood cells. Those are weird. They lose their nucleus as they mature. They're kind of just dumb oxygen trucks. Um, but bacteria don't. They're, they're the one kind of critter on Earth that doesn't have a nucleus. We'll talk about that distinction next. But everybody else, all the stuff you're really familiar with, has a nucleus in the middle, which has the DNA of the cell, which is what? What's the DNA? What's DNA? What does it do? Tristan? Oh, I like it. Makes you yourself. This is one of those times I like this because I like being able to teach you things that you didn't know you didn't know. Kind of like that, like where does a tree's mass come from? Um, you have been spoken to almost completely in metaphors about DNA so far, right? Like it's what makes you, you. It's, it's the, re if you're a cake, it's the recipe for you, yeah? If you're a building, Hazen, if you're a building, DNA is the, no. The blueprint, thank you, the other thing. Yeah, it's the blueprint, right? It's the plans. Sure, that's true as far as it goes, but you still don't know what DNA does. And that, your, your understanding of that will deepen a lot, third quarter. But for now, I'll give you the crash course. The crash course is simply DNA codes for proteins. That's it. So it's like the guy in the chair for my body? The guy in the chair? What do you mean? A movie heck guy. You know how like every superhero has a guy in the chair that like tells him what to do? Oh, I like that. Like that. Very had Alfred. That's a very cool analogy. I like that, Hazen. Thank you. The guy in the chair. Oh. It's a code to build specific proteins at specific times in specific places. And that doesn't sound like enough to make you you. Turns out it, it, it mostly is. Proteins turn out to be like the most multi-purpose workhorse kind of molecule you can build. 
and all like just almost infinite numbers of shapes and jobs that proteins can have. So coding for the right protein at the right time turns out to be enough for DNA to control your whole body. Um, when it's being used to do that, it kind of looks like a big ball of yarn. We call that chromatin. A lot of cases in biology, we find that things are named names that turn out to be kind of dumb because we didn't know what they really were when we named them. And all we knew about DNA when we named chromatin was that if you stain a cell with a particular kind of stain, that's the stuff that stains the darkest. Chroma just means color. So chromatin is called chromatin because it, it turns colors when you put the stain on the cell. Um, that ball of yarn, is great if you want to make proteins. It's not so great when you want to pass your DNA on to your offspring or to a new cell if you're growing, um, which is the other job of DNA, right? It's, it's the code that you pass on. Uh, so what you do when you're about to divide a cell is you pack it up into these little X-shaped bundles of which you have a certain number. Other organisms have other numbers. What am I talking about? Chromosomes, yeah, chromosomes which you have 46 of, you'll learn later it's really more like 23 pairs of. So, okay, that's the blueprints. That's a pretty good analogy. The nucleus is where you keep the blueprint. The edge of the nucleus turns out to be kind of like the cell membrane, but double that. So it's like a double, double layer called the nuclear envelope. Um, it's a double membrane. And oddly enough, for this structure that's protecting like the most important thing in your cells it's full of holes why would that be why would the nucleus have holes in it um let stuff in okay Let's go with the first one. Let stuff in and out. Because, okay, if we're using the, the blueprint analogy and you've got you know, like a skyscraper and one set of blueprints, because that's what the DNA is, it's like the one set of blueprints for that whole cell. Do you just keep the blueprints locked in that room and nobody can come in and out? No, Riley, what are you going to say? It's kind of like how you have like, pores on your skin so like things can. So what who needs to get in and out of the room with the blueprint? Who who, who gets in there? No, no, we go with the blueprint. But if we're talking about a skyscraper, like a literal skyscraper with oh. the blueprints locked in a room, who gets in and out? The workers, right? The people who maybe want to build onto the skyscraper or fix something that's broken, they have to get in and look at the blueprints. Now they're probably gonna need to, well, shoot. Do you let them take the one copy of the blueprints with them? No, what do they do instead? It's a huge blueprint, what do they do? They copy part of the blueprints. They probably do do it with their phone now. Yeah. They copy part of the blueprints and carry it out of the room and go build the stuff they're supposed to build, yeah? It's exactly what the nuclear pores are for. Who are the workers? It's not proteins yet. It's the instructions to build proteins. Now, the close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. Good. So nuclear pores let RNA, specifically what's called messenger RNA, in and out of the nucleus, in to copy part of the instructions, out to use those instructions to build proteins. Okay. Um, 
proteins. Last part of the nucleus, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you learn it, even though it's kind of dumb. It's another one of those that's like we named it something really important sounding before we realized that it's not that important. Actually, it's kind of the opposite of chromatin. Um, the nucleolus. Yeah, nucleolus. Sounds like, like super important, right? It's like the nucleus of the nucleus. It's just a dark spot in the middle of the chromatin that they found, they saw, like, with a mic like a good light microscope before they had any way to see what it did. It's important, but it's not that important. It's it's just a dense spot that happens to be the place where ribosomes start getting built. Now, ribosomes turn out to be the place you send RNA to build the proteins. So they are important, but it's not like the, the control center of the nucleus. It's really not. All right. What's color? You have your dream house is due tomorrow, you know that. This is from my favorite coloring book, the biology coloring book. Yes, it's real. And it's spectacular. You're gonna color a cell. All right, so this is both easier and harder than it looks. Take a look. Notice that there's all these names of cell parts at the top. First thing you are going to do with your colored pencils that you bring every day is you are going to color each cell part name a different color. You're going to color each of these words a different color. Got it? Because some of you just want to start diving in and coloring each part a different color. That's not how this works. You color each cell part name a different color. If you don't have enough colored pencils, if you have like a set of, you know, 10 and there's more than that, feel free to, to blend colors. Um, I also do have a box of colored pencils that you can steal some from, um, but you need to start bringing your colored pencils every day. Okay? Um, then you got to match that color to the cell part of the cell. Now. I said it's both easier and harder than it looks. That sounds hard. Like you have to know what these cell parts look like. You do not. They are labeled with little tiny letters, right? And there's a key, that's, that's your key to, to which is which over here. So for example, the cell membrane says A next to it, find the A, and it points you to that outside rim. Now notice that outside rim is also the front thing here. So whatever color, look up here, whatever color, you're coloring the cell membrane, you're gonna color down in front here as well. That makes sense? Um, let's see, a couple other things. On the, on the left side, it's kind of hard to make out the letters. I, I typed some in for you, it should be clear. Starting at the top left, it's M, L, uh, O, J, K, L, and G, and then a P under that. That should be fairly clear. Um, notice that the ones with stars next to them, nucleus and cytoplasm, um, that refers to the empty space in the cytoplasm and the empty space in the nucleus of which there isn't much. I recommend you do yellow for those and do it last so that you don't have to like color around everything else. Just kind of shade a light yellow over everything. That way it'll, it'll save you some work. Um, any questions about this? This is just coloring. 